Well, hello there again. In a previous video, we have seen me fix this Walkman, the Toshiba KT-S3. And uh, yeah, that repair was an absolute success, except for the battery terminals in the back. Um, and I so far have not upgraded this thing to do lithium-ion batteries, which I am gonna do in the future. But hey, today we are not gonna look at this Walkman, we are going to look at something even older. Here we go, this is the Sony TPS-L2 Walkman. Now, um, here this is a slightly new model since you can see the text Walkman. The uh, previous model just said Sony TPS-L2 and that was it. Now, as you can probably tell, this unit is quite in some banged up shape. It's not the worst condition I've seen it in, but it's also not the best condition I've seen it in. I have seen a lot worse, I have seen a lot better. So, well, what's the problem? It doesn't work. Well, um, yeah, I just bought this the other day, it was a little bit on the expensive side for being a defective unit, but um, it's probably gonna be the same issue. The belts. I've got the replacement belt. So well, let's have a look inside this thing and see what's exactly the problem. I'm 100% sure that also the belts are going to be bad. Oh yeah, and um, the reason the seller mentioned it wasn't working again, uh, or anymore, was because of the battery terminal, since those are also corroded. But as you can see, that corrosion in there is barely nothing in comparison to what we found in this unit. Let's see what we can find inside this thing. And also can, you can see that the hinge has been bent, that's the reason why the door doesn't close properly. It does close on this side, it doesn't close on the top side. And yeah, as you can probably tell, it has fallen down a couple of times. So yeah, it's not the best shape it's in, but hey, if I can get the same color, or mix myself the same color, I could get myself an airbrush and try to uh, repaint this unit again. Wouldn't be too difficult. Especially the plastic, um, I would like to put a new layer of paint on that, since as you can see that is pretty much worn out so far that there is literally no more paint on this unit anymore. Or, well, it still is, but very little, and yeah, the labels are all gone. The volume sliders, which do actually feel quite good. The, those don't really seem to uh, have been damaged or abused. The mechanism all works just fine. So yeah. Let's take out the screws that are inside this unit, which are the wrong screws, and uh, see what we find. And we are in! Now, yeah, um, somebody already has been inside this unit, because, well, um, you could clearly tell that the screws are uh, not the correct ones. And I also found uh, quite a few hairs inside this unit, which is why... Um, I can't really move any of the wheels, or well, at least the capstan, the counter big counterweight back here, doesn't move, because there has somehow hair got inside this unit and wrapped around the shaft of that thing. So well, it seems like you have to take it further apart, just to take that hair out of there. Hmm. Yeah, you shouldn't really bend over the, this unit when you're actually repairing it. But hey, let's do that. And But first of all, I'm going to check if the motor runs just fine uh, by just retaking the belt off uh, its shaft. So well, it doesn't seem like the motor is doing anything since uh, I have taken off the belt, which as you can see is completely deformed. So well, there's no way that that is actually going to work. Let's plug the 3 volts in again and pl press play. But the problem is, um, I'm not exactly sure how many, uh, how much current this thing is supposed to pull, and if I run it off here it just pulls 660 milliamps, and uh, yeah, I don't know if, if that's a sufficient current, because well, the other Walkman I got pulls a lot less current than this, and I really don't want to damage anything in here. Yeah, and even I even increased the current to 1.5 amps and it still shorts out, so 
yeah, I've got to make sure that everything on here is alright and there aren't any things that are shorting the motor out. Hmm. Gotta take it further apart and take out the PCB. Let's see why. Well, I have found the issue why it's not working. Uh, normally, if you have a plug like this, the pin in the middle is positive and the shielding around it is negative. But if we take a look at the capacitor in here and its polarity, you can see that it's exactly the opposite. So, Sony, why did you do this? I mean, I know they want that you buy the custom power supply and everything, but I mean, come on, really? Well, anyways, let's flip the polarity around, because that's definitely the reason why it was not working, and uh, see what happens. Let's take a look at the motor again, and I press play and watch the current that it's using. There we go, we are pulling 60 milliamps, and that does seem correct. And uh, yeah, I can assure you that that thing is moving. So, yeah, it does seem like everything is still functional. And uh, yeah, we just need some new belts and clean up the battery acid damage that we have in the battery compartment. Hmm, not too difficult. Alright, I'm just going to show you how the uh, mechanism with the belts works. We have this one belt that goes around a pulley and that attaches to the shaft of the engine. Oh, it just ripped. Oops. And well, what this belt does, it just uh, moves the capstan and uh, this little pulley here. Now, of course, that is only probably going to serve really for playback. I'm not gonna move the rest since well it's just gonna turn this small pin and that pinch roller there we do still have another belt which is this one the second one which goes uh, from the top of the capstan to this pulley here and then drives the rest with uh, the mechanics inside this thing and which you can see moving when you press the buttons the gears do look like they are still in good shape. Now I'm not gonna lie, they did not make servicing this thing easy because while well, I have to take out the entire PCB somehow or at least bend it so far that I can get down to these screws that hold the capstan in place. But hey, uh, it's definitely still a very service friendly unit since, well, the back cover comes off quite easily and all the other pieces also separate quite simple and easy from the unit. So it's not the worst thing in uh, terms of how service friendly it is, but I'm just gonna say that the Toshiba model was definitely a lot more service friendly than the original Sony Walkman. But hey, they did a great job at uh, building this thing. And the interesting thing is, well, the original Walkman is smaller than this thing. But hey, let's just get in there and try to get that capstan out. And just make sure that you not lose any screws. There we go. Now we can put in the new belts into this unit. It still is quite complicated because, well, the wires are still attached. The only thing I actually did disorder was the microphone out of the uh, top case but hey that uh, soldering that back on is no uh, problem and I did definitely remember the polarity and things so got the two new belts I just could have figured out which one is which it seems the longer one should be the one that grabs around the past uh, caps then and the uh, goes to the motor and the shorter the much thicker one seems to be the uh, one that connects to the pulley but hey I could be mistaken let's see which one goes where all right the first build is on I'm just gonna make sure that it's on correct uh, just so the tape runs in the correct direction which should be that way and it seems there has to be a small twist here in the end, because now it's running in the opposite direction. 
And well, there we go. Now it's running the correct direction. Just because you've got to do a small twist near the uh, motor up here. And uh, yeah, that just makes it run in the uh, correct direction. Just make sure that the belt isn't rubbing against itself. Otherwise, it's going to break again. And uh, yeah, you, you really don't want to do that all over again. Since taking this thing apart, well, it's not the easiest thing. Alright, everything is put back together. Well, at least uh, so far that I can operate this thing. Still have the PCB exposed and not the microphone hooked up to it. So, well, let's just press play on this thing and see what happens. That is a stop button. Whoops. There we go. We are up and running again. And also, the LED is working. Woohoo! That was an easy fix. Well, let's put a tape in and see what happens. Alright, I have a tape in and raised the volume a bit, so let's press, press play. So as you can see, that works just fine on this channel at least. Let's go over to the another channel and see if that one works also. So well, as you can tell, this thing is operational again. All I've got to do now is take some contact cleaner and clean up all the uh, contacts inside this unit. Too simple. Alright, and as you can tell, the Walkman is now fully operational again. And yeah, by the way, this hotline button on the side is pretty much just a microphone so that you can talk to the other person while still listening to the music. Or, well, at least without taking the headphones, although it does sound quite awful. But hey, it works. So well, thank you for watching, and goodbye. Oh yeah, and by the way, I did actually get the original case for this thing, or the protective thing with the belt clip on the bottom, and also the original headphones, which surprisingly for are quite good for being those spongy things in here. Okay. Yeah. That's it.